I, I everybody can sing, bro. Like I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I agree with you, but there are some people, there are some people that don't think they can sing. You are wrong, you can sing. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Gamefly which lets you rent video games online and basically play them as long as you want. And when you're done, you send it back and you get another one. They've got titles for Xbox, PlayStation, Wii U, uh, Nintendo Switch, you name it. So if you want to save some money, you like to play games, click the link down below. You'll help out me and you'll help out yourself. In the meantime, on to the show. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today's guest is the lead singer for Death in Motion, or as their fans know them, Dim. This band has been kicking ass and taking names since 2006, opening for national acts such as Fear Factory, Mushroom Head, Motor Grader, Divine Heresy, Agnostic Front, and Spineshank, just to name a few. From their self-titled debut album to their 2019 single, Grip, this act has made the metal community in Vegas and beyond sit up and take notice. Please welcome to the show the one and only Wes Logan from Death in Motion. First of all, I want to say uh, Happy New Year. We made it. Happy New Year. Even though 2021 is trying to be, even though 2021 is trying to be uh, Electric Boogaloo over here. Man, it's crazy. Wild yeah. times, man. Yep. Well, <clears throat> how are you doing? How was your uh, holiday season and, and you know your New Year's? It was good. Uh, Kind of kept New Year's super low key, We're trying to do as much to keep everything kind of limited and stay inside and all that fun stuff. But uh, had fun New Year's, had fun Christmas, got to beat up the kids a little bit, and it was fun. Nice. Um, well, <laughs> real quick, Wes also wrestles under the name Beast the Butcher for Versus Pro Wrestling. Uh, your 2014 album Dia de los Muertos ties in nicely with the whole theme of uh, lucha wrestling. Did that high flying style of wrestling affect the way that album was written at all? Uh, no, not in that situation. Um, so Diaz kind of was a, 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 a song where we developed that, like where the music was really behind it and I didn't have any lyrics to it, but um, we, we lost a few people that year. So it was very kind of like a, an ode to the people that we lost. Wasn't necessarily anything with Lucha Libre, even though it kind of had some implications there. And even one of the songs that we did off of that album, we had a wrestling event attached to it. But uh, no, nothing nothing that was relative to any Lucha Libre there, but it was something that really meant a lot to us going forward. Um, I, I feel it's important to take a moment to talk about the effect COVID has had on both music in general and your band in particular. Unfortunately, two of your band members have family members that uh, currently have COVID. Is that right? Yeah, they uh, actually they're on the men. Everything is a little bit better with them now. So I think they have the the mild symptoms. I think even from the initial situation, they had mild symptoms, but shut us down like practice wise and recording wise for a good little while. Um, but it seems like everybody's doing okay at this point. Excellent, excellent. Um, let's see here, had some. Oh yes, I love your shirt. That is that is my motto <laughs> for don't suck. Yes, absolutely. That's my high. <laughs> my, my highest accolade, anytime I see somebody that I know and play music, I go up to them and I say, way to not suck. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Sticking with the wrestling uh, here just for one more moment, where did the line between music and wrestling start to blur for you? Because I know that, uh, that it's kind of a crossover now for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... <laughs> When I actually as a kid, like that's kind of where it, it really started. When I first started watching wrestling, I was two years old. The first um, time that I actually like remember a match with this tag team called Demolition, and uh, they came out with this like heavy metal like riffs and stuff like that. Um, I believe that the music was written by Jimmy Hart, which is a which I'm a big fan of. Uh, uh, but really? it was just like. Yeah, Jimmy Hart wrote a lot of the stuff from the WWE back in the day. Um, he did like he was a he was he was in a, a very very popular band back in the day too. Like 
Uh, that's amazing. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that about Jimmy Hart, but it totally ties in with his outfit, which had, I think, piano keys on his jacket and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was Jimmy, man. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy wrote a lot of the stuff that came out of WWF back then. It was WWE, WWF, whatever you want to call it. But uh, when, uh, when I heard that, that music and I saw their look, like it was just awe inspiring to me. So uh, if, if you see, how I dress when I'm Beast the Butcher during wrestling. It's kind of like an ode to, to demolition and wrestlers like Delirious and also like a like a, a voodoo witch vibe type thing for that too. So like it's it's I I that, those lines were blurred like immediately because my brother was a big like uh, heavy metal butt rock fan back in the day. Like he used to listen to Guns and Roses and Kiss and uh, uh, Motley Crue. So it was already embedded in me, but like having that blend has always been there. Like I always loved the, the, the themes of these wrestlers that came out. Excellent. And I can see that. I, I've seen pictures of your uh, Beast the Butcher outfit and, and it, it definitely is a, a very old school wrestling uh, to me in a good, good way. Good. In, a, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, uh, no I, I take that. I take that as a compliment. I want to get into some kind of usual band <laughs> interview questions here. Um, number one, let's talk, um, musical influences what was your earliest musical influence you know when you were young it just got you thinking i want to do that um it mainly like when i first started getting into like doing uh like being in a band like that's when i was listening to like deftones seven dust uh even bands like uh like el nino nonpoint a, a lot of those like new metal s bands is what kind of got me wanting to do it what is your current musical influence when you need to like get pumped or, or you know for the gym or for um just making music? Making music, I've kind of steered off of like my personal influences. Like I like listening to things that are not common now. Like I, I like m help making things that are not common and that's very rare to do. Um, I want things that are gonna have little uh, influences from different types of music that aren't just metal or not just hip hop. I want to kind of go outside the box with certain things. So um not necessarily making music, but when it comes to like working out or even like getting pumped for wrestling, um, I, I do want to kind of veer towards like Ice Nine Kills, stuff like that. Um, man, there's uh, Fire from the Gods I was actually listening to for a little while, man. Like they're, they're a great band. Um, I don't know if a lot of people are, are familiar with Inta Shikari, but like Inta Shikari had like a very like um, dubstep type feel to them that was very aggressive at the same time, kind of like uh, like UK, um, like UK hip hop type style metal, you know, just very weird, very off base. <laughs> That's awesome that you're actually keeping it very eclectic and you're listening and uh, because it, that 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 way you're not limited in what you can create. That and I'm weird, man. Like. <laughs> I, I like a lot of stupid shit. <laughs> like, I, uh, I, like I'm a, I grew up on hip hop, so I like I like a lot of a lot of different things. There, I think the only thing that I didn't really get into was country, and that's not because it's not good. It's just that I can't really like relate to it, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, as a songwriter, especially you know guitar, there's there's some country and western and western uh, that I get kind of I kind of get feels from. I kind of get inspired. But the rock calls me. The rock definitely calls me more. Absolutely. Like, I don't know if you listen to the last two Seven Dust albums, but a lot of it has a lot of that, um, that twangy feel to it mm -hmm. when it comes to certain riffs. And when they go into the, the breakdowns of it, it's like, man, that combination could not get any better. Um, so, and that's, and that's also the, the, the way that I know that I'm getting older because when you're, when you're a dumb kid, you kind of get aggressive and you're like, oh, no, F that. Like, I don't like listening to that stuff. That's so corny. That's so stupid. And then you catch yourself singing with your daughter, uh, like some Taylor Swift stupid shit like that, you know. Uh, and it, it, you start to understand how music works, how it gets catchy, why they have hooks, why, they ha why they're popular, why they're so simple, uh, and why they can be so intricate at the same time. Um, you start growing up a little bit when you start, you know, listening to more things. Definitely, definitely. Um, you talk to pretty much any musician that's over a certain age, and they're gonna be like, "Man, when I was a kid, 
it was all like, you know, that music sucks. I'm never going to do covers. I'm never, you know, and, and you, you're very absolute, you know, you have hard and fast rules. And, um, then next thing you know, like you said, you catch yourself, Hey, this is, this is pretty good. Oh, it's Justin Bieber. Ah, <laughs> Okay. Well, that sucks. No, I need, I need to. A bit. It's time to reevaluate things. Um, but uh, you know, the the joke is that uh, you know that you're old when you're you you find yourself watching Disney Channel and your kid left the room ten minutes ago. Yep, hundred percent. Like, yeah. And I use that analogy with wrestling too, because like, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different things about wrestling that can be set for a certain fan and set for another fan so if you notice like wwe has a lot of characters they have a lot of slow building wrestling so like it's like the disney channel for for wrestling fans because you can understand everything that's going on you may not like what's going on but you understand it when you go into like companies like ring of honor and AEW and stuff like that it's more like watching law and order like Law and order is a little bit more intricate. You have to kind of pay attention and you have to understand what's going on. Kids probably won't get it, but they might still watch it, <laughs> you know? Right. All right. Uh, moving away from wrestling. Okay. Sticking with music now. Um, yeah, yeah. So we've talked about earliest musical influence and, and current musical influence. Uh, I was wondering if we can go ahead and talk a little bit about shows. What is your best sh favorite show memory that you've been part of, not oh. that you went to see? Man. Um, that's hard because like it's not even about venues or size of crowds or any situation where like you felt you played your hardest and it was the best fucking set that you ever did. Um, I have a good group of guys now and I've had a good group of guys for a good amount of time. And it's just having them up on stage and being able to not get frustrated because we fucked up or not get irritated because the crowd's not into it. And when we get to have fun and pick on each other and pick on the fans and like, just be dumb, like that's our payoff. So like, nobody wants to go to practice, but we know we got to practice and we know we got to write, we know we got to make music, but everybody wants to have the, that. And nobody wants to like put their equipment on stage. Nobody wants to tear that shit down. Nobody wants to do the hard stuff, but that, that 15, 20, 30, 45, even an hour long set, makes all that shit worth it so like we take that and like even if we have like a crappy sounding show we still have fun you're so right that is such a part of the just being a musician that's if you're going to be a performing musician and there is a difference you know between recording and, and just noodling around in your room or whatever if you're going to actually put on shows you're going to have to move stuff and, and everyone forgets <laughs> Um, I, myself included. I used to do four-hour cover shows with with a, a band, a rock band. We did all sorts of stuff. I mean, from Weezer to Metallica to, you know, uh, classic rock like Deep Cuts. But I would always forget. I would have such a good time as the front man and the rhythm guitarist. I would have such a good time that I would forget until that last break. And you're like, oh, oh that's right. I got we got to load up after this, and and and, uh, and I'm tired now. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so um, <laughs> I I don't miss I don't miss that part of shows. I, I I will never miss that part of the load in load out, especially when you get there and there's the stage is six feet high and there's no ramp. You know, <laughs> it was just like really, Ooh, like uh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Um, all right. So from I, my main thing is backlining. I fucking hate backlining. That's the most irritating shit ever. You mean like when they provide a backline? No, when like you're opening for a, a bigger band and they've got all their shit on stage already because they don't yeah. want to move that shit. So it's like, okay, great. Yeah. You know, we have like two feet of space in between six people. It's like, oh, this is the shits, man. Thanks. Yeah, my drummer has literally three by three, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I've been there, done that, trust me. Um, and, and I've seen it all on the strip. I've seen it at all sorts of venues. And you're just like, someone didn't want to, you know, have, have their like, you have 15 minutes, go moment. But that's okay. Yeah. yeah. If, you're, if they're a national, <laughs> if they're a national act and they're on the road and they're doing this every night, you know. Oh yeah. I get it. But. Yeah, yeah. Save some room. Doesn't mean um, we have to like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, I have as uh, shift over here real quick. Faithful viewers will hopefully remember that 
any money I make on this channel through Patreon or through sales of my CDs or through sales of merch or whatever, it is going to the the either the channel make it better or the local music the local musicians. And part of that is when we can have shows again, I really want to put on a showcase where musicians actually get paid to play. How about that? Hmm? And uh, it'll be any, anybody that's been on the show that, uh, that's done an interview, whether they've uh, whether it was a, li a live interview in my home so that they could actually perform or like this with the Zoom meeting. Um, I want to be able to, to give you give the bands and the musicians an opportunity to get up and show what they can do by, you know, when they plug in and when they actually like, put on a show. And what I want is to have a backline of everybody's stuff all set up so that it's literally this band's done. Next band can kick right in. Of course, there's there's limitations to that, uh, but uh, I want to make it happen somehow. And that's my goal because that that 15 minutes of setup and you got you know such stuff up. Now you got 15 minutes to get your crap off, and the other band has you know has to get theirs. Is is so such a mood killer. And hearing the you know the, the house radio or DJ or whatever kick in is such a it's such a vibe killer. And I, I don't want that. So if you ever see or hear about a Room 6, you know, show going on, come expecting that it's going to be just wall-to-wall -wall music, I'm hoping. Uh, back to Wes. So how's that sound? That was great. I love it. That's my plan. I mean, it, it would take a, a huge stage, of course, even for like three bands to have all their stuff up on stage at the same time. But um, I, I, it's a dream. It's a dream. Uh, if you're if you're looking to do it virtually for right now, I might have an option for you. You just have to come and meet me real quick. So yeah, well, virtually, I haven't thought about doing that yet. Uh, but virtually could work. I uh, unfortunately, with my personal life being what it is, it's so it, I'm kind of busy there. And then of course doing all this, I, the timing, uh, the the free, the spare time I have to try to put this together is very minimal. Uh, yeah. I hear you. And until and and also with vaccine coming out and stuff. I'm hopeful by like June or July, <laughs> there might be shows again. Well, Yay. Let's my see. Birthday, my birthday, <laughs> my, it'd, be a, it'd be a nice birthday present on July 12th. We'll see. Mm. But yeah, if, uh, if it seems like it's still going to be stonewalled for a while, I think I might have to start looking into ways where we can do it virtually and the bands can, you know, get paid and, and somehow sell their merch during their slot kind of thing. Uh, or, or have like, um, yeah, now you've given me some stuff to think about. Thank you, Wes. No problem. We'll chat soon. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. Mm -hmm. From, you know, show, show memories. I wanted to talk about the band as a whole. Um, when, when is the last time you guys were all in the same room together? Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, Probably, uh, probably roughly about three or four weeks since we've all been linked up. Uh, obviously, because of you know personal situations, and uh, some people have you know obviously all, all of us have our nine to fives at this point. So like things are just a little sketch when it comes to time. But um, that and just the personal situations going on with COVID and everything, like we've we've kind of been limited on what we can actually link up. Uh, we were actually supposed to link up last night, but. Uh, Family situations, you got to shut it down for a little bit. So um, we're hopefully going to be in the same room together again next Friday. So we'll see. Here's hoping. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Uh, real briefly, I wanted to touch on something that's, it's an ongoing kind of, I don't want to say problem necessarily, but it is an issue in the metal community, especially um, the the lack uh, or the, the, uh, the small amount of, of women and also just you know non-binary and whatever uh, in the metal community either as front people or just being in bands what is it that, and i was wondering if i could pick your brain a little bit and have you seen uh a lot of metal bands because you know more about metal bands than i do locally and otherwise have you seen any sort of surge in non-male we'll go with that non-hetero male uh, presence in the metal community. Have you seen any sort of change in that lately? Um, yeah, I think like I think the last few years have been a little bit more prominent uh, with bands like Diamante. Um, there's there's a there's a few bands that are on my 
remember that I just can't like spill off like right off the top of my head, but it's it is still limited in comparison, but it's starting to be less of an issue. Uh, there's a lot of female guitarists that are out there that are just shredding people's faces that just don't get the nor- notoriety because a they are women and b they're typically not in the front run. So like if they're just playing guitar, if they're just playing drums, you probably won't hear about them. It sucks. But uh, you, you also have bands like Straight Line Stitch that uh, have a have a female front and I think a female drummer now. Um, I, from what I understand, that they did you know cut ties and aren't doing music anymore. But like that was a that was a strong band for a long time. So it's just the, it's just the fact that they're not put to the forefront, and not given any uh, any like spotlight. I, I definitely agree, and it, it's something that uh, what, what prompted that question. And it was kind of out of left field, but what prompted the question is, uh, given recent political developments, shall we say, uh, and also just from 2016 on, it seems like metal and punk would be just like a magnet for any of the marginalized communities, uh, including what's being re- referred to on TikTok as the alphabet mafia, the LGBTQIA+. I love that alphabet <laughs> mafia. That's awesome. And, uh, and, and pe- people like me that are an ally... Uh, see the hat in the corner. Uh, people like me that are an ally of, of all that, and and you know, Black Lives Matter and the people of color, all that, we're being called alphabet enforcers, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that term. I, yeah. I I I like the term personally for me because of multiple reasons. Because mm-hmm. I'm kind of a dick when it comes to certain things, and being having that 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 strong term of being an enforcer especially when it comes to, to being an ally, I think was is something I'm probably going to steal from you here in a bit, but yeah. Go for it. I didn't a, come up with it. I love that. Yeah, I didn't come up with it. But I'm going to enforcer. I'm, I'm going to put that on my, as my job title. I'm actually thinking of making some Room 6 shirts, so don't steal that. But um, Okay, for sure. <laughs> well, the reason I mentioned that, the reason I bring up TikTok, TikTok especially, I've been seeing, uh, uh, just because, you know, the algorithm – uh, it's been popping up a lot of people who are like just sitting there with a guitar or a bass or whatever. And there's some ladies. I mean, we've all seen like the 10 year old prodigy on drums or whatever, but there are some yeah, yeah. late, some ladies that if they weren't holding an instrument, you would think, Oh, they're very, they're very pretty. They're very beautiful. They're very, they're fit. They're whatever. But the fact that they are shredding and their makeup is on point, <laughs> and, you know, you're, and you're just looking at them going like, you are so much more talented than I will ever be on that. And not only that, but you have are so much more driven than I've had to be, you know, than any 100%. guy, you know. Uh, and, and so I just I thought I'd pick your brain because they are they are shredding metal there, sh- and they're also pulling out the funk and stuff. But I was wondering how you know moving from this is me on TikTok to what you've seen at shows. Now, obviously, this shows thing is is a whole crapshoot now. So, but um, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a whole load of non cis hetero you know male people on stage as opposed to just in the crowd and i'm 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 here for it for one so right 100 percent. like i was a, i was a i was a huge fan of kitty when they were still up and running i, I don't know if they're doing anything new but um i was a, i was a big fan of theirs when they when they kind of had that all female band set but like then they get put into uh, a niche or they get put into a pigeonhole type situation and it's not fair. Um, the, the thing about it is that going back to the Disney Channel type mentality when it comes to certain things, um, popular music is very dumbed down. So these girls that can shred, that can kill it, um, don't really get to showcase it when they're in a band because they have to kind of, they gotta, they have to dial their shit back for them to be popular and that's not fair. Um, so this does give them an opportunity to just like, Hey, yeah, that's cool. I can play this song, but watch this shit, you know? Right. And I, I think, uh, just one, one more thing on this and then we'll move on. We'll move back to you. But, uh, I just, I think that they're, they're, they're definitely gonna have to cast kind of a wide net and also be like, like you said, I can play what you, you're expecting, but also boom, you know, here's some darker, heavier stuff, or here's really, really, really fast technical stuff that you you weren't expecting from me because of X, Y, Z, you know, factors. 
So that, I'm excited for it. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping that, you know, with 2021 and all the things that have happened good so far, um, that it's, it's going to be a, a reemergence of music that actually means something and that actually um, has a bit more of a message than just darkness and hate and, you know, I, I hate my parents or whatever. So, all right. <laughs> Moving on, uh, let's let's go ahead and talk gear, if you don't mind. Now, you are the singer. Are, do you play any instruments? I forgot to ask. No, I'm not that talented. Like I, I everybody can sing, bro. Like I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I agree with you, but there are some people. There are some people that don't think they can sing. You are wrong. You can sing. <laughs> Everyone can sing. That's right. Uh, so, what what gear do you rock at a show? Do you do you have like your own microphone or, or your own microphones that you prefer to use, or you just rock whatever is at the show? I rock whatever was at was at the show. There was a long, you know. I think you were probably around the time when like I was probably coming up, and you had to bring all your your own shit. You had to bring your own mic. You had to bring your own cords. You had to bring your own fucking whole stage type stuff and now like venues have kind of hipped it up and we're like hey we got you a mic we got you even a backline set you know we got all this stuff now just you know take what you want which is great that's awesome um but i came up gritty and then got spoiled real quick because everybody in my band knows about instruments they know about like the type of mics that we need to use and the type of chords we need to use. And they have all these numbers and letters that come with these really good microphones and guitars. It's like, I don't know any of that shit. I know you got, I, I know, I know you probably have like a B50, whatever the fuck ever. And you got a crank. And I know those type of terms as far as what's in it. I got no clue. I know that I can yell into a mic and I can scream and I can sing. Um, and that's the extent of what I have as far as like musical knowledge outside of notes and shit like that. But like, as far as like instruments, I got I got nothing special, buddy. I can deal with anything. <laughs> Trust me, I, I was I was right there. What changed it for me was number one, trying to record my own self. And mm -hmm. that's a rabbit hole that gets really expensive if you're not careful. But yeah. also ooh, pardon me. Ooh. Uh I'm I'm not a perfectionist, but I do have certain expectations of myself. And when it you hear it play back and like no, no, this is why you pay someone. This is why you exactly. go. But then also, uh, I got into a band where the bass player had built his house into a recording studio. So I would just sit there and stare at the back of his head while he, you know, was on the computer constantly over and over and over listening to the same thing, but making little changes. And, um, but he would tell me, you know, like, I'm going to try this mic and I'm try this and this and this. And I still, you know, I, I have a few mics, but most of them were either free or, or gifts. Um, and I have no problem being a singer, rocking a, a stage, a mic at a stage, but it all depends what kind of gig. If it's, we are coming, we are the band, the band tonight, that's it. Then I'm going to bring my own stuff. I want to know, I want to know what to expect. Yeah. If it's, we're getting a set and we're in the middle and, you know, we're playing mostly covers because this crowd doesn't care about it. You know, this place doesn't care about our originals. Then yeah, I'll give, just give me your SM57, whatever, and and uh, 58, and I'll, I'll go for it. So, yeah, all right. Know. Um, I know I know SM57. I think we're on the same page there. That's probably <laughs> the extent of what I know, my guy. Well, generally 57s you don't sing through. You put in front of an amp or something. Yeah. Uh, a 58 you generally you, you'll sing through generally, but uh, eh, it, it it needs must. I mean, my first band when I was 21, 22, and the rest of them were like 18. Uh, mm -hmm. I sang through a bass amp. <laughs> Ooh, <okay. laughs> that was it, yeah. Well, I mean, you do what you gotta do, and we, yeah, all, yeah. All four amps were in the corners facing each other. We had keyboards, we had drums, we had bass, we had guitar, we had me singing, and um, I I got what I the most out of that bass amp I could to make my voice get heard, and I learned <laughs> how to. And I learned I learned the James Hetfield enunciation technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> I need that. And you know, you learn. Right. Uh, but, but also going from that to any show with any sort of decent PA, suddenly it was like, hey, I can hear myself perfectly well. And I know exactly 
what I'm singing because I learned how it should feel in my head to get the note I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I did the thing with the ear, the finger in the ear and singing. So, so moving on from gear, because it sounds like you're not really much of a gear whore. So <laughs> that's not at all. <laughs> good, good for you. <laughs> but um, I wanted to talk, if we can, real quick about your uh, your singing style. Like you're here in, you're in Vegas, you know, you're in Nevada with me and it's not never, it, it never is nearly as cold as a lot of the rest of the, the, the country. Um, right. So, so we don't have to struggle, suffer too much with that because that can be a problem for singers. But how do you take care of, because your style of singing is different than what I do. You're a little bit more guttural, a little bit more aggressive and, and you know, and deeper. How do you handle the dryness and, and what do you do before you get ready to sing either recording or, or, or a show? Well, little background on me physically. I've always had sinus issues. Vegas is horrible about that crap, man. Like, I think you know that uh, if you don't have a nosebleed every year, at least two or three times a year, you probably don't live here. You just visit every once in a while. So uh, <laughs> as far as physically... Um, it sucks a little bit only because of how many sinus, how many sinus problems I have per year. Um, but sometimes it could be a benefit. Um, as far as taking care of my voice, I, um, I grew up in, in doing like choirs and, and being a part of some kind of outfit where I was singing. Um, so I, I learned how to do my exercises or even just singing in the car to kind of lighten it up a little bit. So yeah, I got a lot of screams and, and guttural sounds, but I also have a lot of those cleans in there too. Um, so it's kind of hard to manipulate if you're going ham on everything. So I try not to do a ton of screaming. I've actually dialed back a lot of my screams and my songs on these uh, these last few songs too, because A, I want people to understand that I do have a, a, a clean singing voice and B, um, you just got to kind of take care of it a little bit more. Um, I think uh, in shadows went through a lot of that when he was coming up too. like, he was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of growly screamies. And then he dialed back because of complications with his voice. Sometimes you just got to clean it up. I actually do understand exactly how it feels. I, I have a deviated septum uh, from an accident when I was younger. And um, also I think I inherited part of it from my dad, but there are moments where, I can feel it. Okay, something's weird. Something's different, and I need to do something to adjust it. Um, for me, it was always, um, does my throat feel coated? But then again, I'm I was definitely going for as clear as possible. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, but if my throat felt coated, uh, I forget who told me this, but sucking on a lime just kind of eats away at it. You know, right before you're gonna sing, suck on a lime, have some have have some cola or some water, uh, uh, not iced. And, and Not ice. No, that's all bad. Yeah. Yep. Shots. Um, Shots I'm gonna good. give you. A, I'm gonna give you a little, uh, little story, because um, you you mentioned the deviated septum, so it's a little cringeworthy. I, I apologize for the for the jump off, but um, right. when I started wrestling training, I was wrestling in one in one of the promoters' backyard, and a freak accident happened. It's nothing. Nobody's fault. No. No. Nobody to blame. But I'm taking a body slam, and on the way down from the body slam. The, uh, the dude that's slamming me, his nail gets caught in my nose and digs out a piece of cartilage. Ooh. Yeah, so um, I've been wrestling for about 10, 11 years now, and I have that same spacing in my cartilage since then to, like, it, it develops, like, blood clots in my nose consistently. So I can, like, it looks like I'm digging in my nose all the time, which technically I am, but, like, I, I got to get that that out so I can actually breathe sometimes. I actually tried to get it fixed, and they gave me, like, this ointment and, like, a little bit of cartilization to, like, kind of clean it up, but it's still a problem. Wow, you win. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 mine is because a black belt in Kempo kicked me in the face. Um, that, that's still pretty savage, bro. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we were messing around. Like, we did, he did, we did the mistake of, you know – we actually worked in an office together, but it was that kind of loose atmosphere where it was just like kind of messed around. And I studied, I studied martial arts when I was younger and I, I jammed him. I went in cause he's, it's tempo. I figured kicks and long, you know, long strikes. 
So I jammed him real quick, and out of his reflexes took over, and out of nowhere, a sole of a foot, pink, and I dropped. Yes. I mean, I dropped, and I bounced right back up, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, but that, that I think, didn't help the, the, the inherited deviated septum, so um, <laughs> thanks, Chris. We're yeah, <laughs> but you win, man. That's that's out of nowhere. I mean, it it never occurred to me wrestlers must have fairly well trimmed, well manicured fingers. You're supposed to. It's not always a thing, though. I I seem to remember some. I don't know if it was. Uh, I'm gonna say Sting, and I mean Sting with the makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not, um, but I seem to remember he didn't he have like little points on his nails or somebody did where and and I remember thinking like that looks dangerous. There's uh he had, he always wore like gloves when he was like black and white Sting. Um, I think the guy that you're thinking of is the boogeyman. Um, Maybe. And cute little funny story behind that. Like, so he had these little like claws with metal on them. Um, and we were doing an event over at Maximum Comics when it was around. And it was the first time my kid has ever met any other wrestlers outside of the, the core wrestlers that she's usually around. So she's like, oh, he looks cool. I was like, you want to go say hi? She's like, no, he's scary. I was like, well, he's nice. And we go over to him and like, he's like picking on her and smiling at her. And then when he, she went to go give him a high five and she like, he like grabbed her hand with the, with the claws and she freaked the fuck out. That was, that was probably like the, the silliest but coolest moment that I've ever seen. So. Awesome. Oh, that's funny. Uh, no, he, he looks cool. No, he looks scary. Which is it? <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Wanted to talk briefly about um, you know, your kids, actually, if you don't mind. Uh, you have how many? You you have one of your own, right? One of my own, and then uh, two stolen ones. I two stole. Stolen I stole yes. kids, Yeah. Awesome. And um, are are any of them showing any sort of interest or aptitude for music? Uh, my daughter. Yes, and um, our oldest, yes. So um, the oldest more in tune because, A, he's learning a lot in school. So um, he not only plays vi uh, violin, plays guitar, um, and he also can make some beats here and there. He, we got him a keyboard for Christmas, so he's been, he's been toying around a little bit with that. Um, my daughter definitely wants to sing. Um, and she talked to me about hopefully making songs with her and she's like eight. So like, hopefully we can kind of like get some little cute stuff going on with that. But yeah, I mean, like, I think universally it's going to be a musical household. <laughs> so. Well, there's hoping. Um, I, my daughter is 13 uh, now and when she was seven or eight, there were some lessons, but she enjoys music. She enjoys dancing, but she doesn't want to actually have to like you know learn it and do it and she she she's happy to do it she'll sing yeah. and dance all the time and she, and she pull and you see her doing like okay you learned that in lessons i can see and and she's she and she is taking music in class she's got an a and a plus in math i mean awesome. uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry in music in music music yeah uh but but um it's one of those things that she's she's like me in that regard when i was younger i just happened to be good at this stuff i studied dance for 10 years I never practiced outside of the uh, actual lessons, and the lessons were for learning what steps are we going to do. And I still got right. sol I still got solos at the recitals and stuff. And same with music. It's like I'm now, like you said, I'm older, and when you realize your limitations, you're like, well, I have two options: I can stay in this wheelhouse, or I can push and keep pushing and focus and force myself. And 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 I'm finally doing it, and it's really yeah. humbling. Um, you think you you know you think you're good, and then you know I'm I'm currently um, I'm working on a couple songs that not only am I trying to learn them on drums because that's my the new instrument the new focus is you know that, it, but I also am trying to learn also the guitar and the bass and the vocals for them so that I can really learn a song because it's going to force me to be better on the other instruments. Um, Absolutely. You know even if I never have the opportunity to play and play it in front of anybody, I will at least know okay. I got this, which should hopefully influence any future songwriting as well. Uh, but also, I got this bass hanging on the wall. For, I got to use it. I got to do something with it, you know. And I got, <laughs> I got these guitars. 
uh, I'm going to have to frame, I think I've got to come up with some sort of frame or some sort of display for all the stuff that's stuck in strings, which I know is ticking mm -hmm. off a lot of music teachers. <laughs> <laughs> but once I figure out a way to, because those, those are either my personal music history or their room six, you know, history. And once I can have a way to get all that in a place, you know, hang it up somewhere, then I'll be more likely to probably take down every single one of those and work my way, rotate through all the guitars. Um, that's my excuse anyway, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all yeah. have one. <laughs> yeah. But, um, which leads me to a good, a good question. Uh, uh, really, it's obviously shows are currently dead, uh, but let's say you're on a show. Let's, this, is, this is the last question, by the way. Good job. You made it. Appreciate you. <laughs> let's say, let, let's suppose that you're, you do a show and somebody comes up to you and says, how do I be like you, Mr. Logan? How do I sound like you? You know, what is one piece of advice that you wish someone had given you when you started music? Don't do it. No. Um, Everyone says mainly, that. Everyone says that. <laughs> uh, mainly, um, if you if you if if you want to be respected and if you want to make it make want want to make it in the business, you have to charge people. Like it's not be like uh oh i want you on this song oh well that's gonna be five grand not nothing like that um there's a lot of promoters that are going to take advantage of you there's a lot of promoters that are going to give you those exposure bucks and that's that's there's, there's there's no money in that there's no there's no effort in that there's no actual progression in that yeah you might find somebody that's going to be like oh that band's really cool i think they should be signed okay there's a lot of there's a million people that are going to feel that way about you but there's nobody that's actually going to do anything about that. So you have to make it worth your time. If Even if it's 100 bucks or 200 bucks for doing a show, make sure that promoter pays you. Make sure they take care of you. If you want to do favors, do favors. Don't do everything as a favor. Like, that's not going to get you anywhere. You're worthy of your time. I agree. And, and that's why you know, my idea about the showcase is definitely, like, even if it's 50 bucks a person, I'm going to get you something and also, you know, we'll sell you the merch and, and get, you know, the exposure as well. Um, that's why I, I do appreciate everyone that's been on the channel. Because I'm not paying people to be on the channel, that's for sure. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I feel like I wish I could do more with what YouTube allows me to do, you know. Uh, right. but, but unfortunately, until I get a thousand subscribers, hint, hint. Plug, plug. Until I get a thousand <laughs> subscribers... I can't have external links, so I can't pop up a link saying, go to Death Emotions website right here. I, I can't do that yet. So all I can do is put it in the description. And of course, if people being people, this generate, you know, especially this TikTok generation, if it's not 15 seconds, if it's not like immediate, it, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. So um, I do appreciate it. every one of the subscribers. Thank you so much. And I do appreciate everyone that's been on the channel. Uh, including you, Wes. So thank you so much for coming on. Do you have any sort of upcoming news or anything you want to say to the fans? Uh, check out Versus Pro Wrestling. We have some music from uh, Death in Motion or Dem, whatever you want to call us, coming out here soon. Um, check out our buddy Sledge and Ring of Honor. He's actually going to be uh, coming out to one of our tracks as well. Um, yeah, man, we've got a lot of things going on. Just keep in touch with us. Keep in touch with me. Awesome. And you'll there will be links in the description down in the doobly-doo. Uh, that you can definitely follow Death Emotion or Dim on their social media um, and uh, also, you know, links to their YouTube so you can check out their videos, etc. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Wes Logan for coming on the show. Great interview. And also, I want to say, if you want to be on the channel or if you know somebody that you want to see me interview on the channel or review, because I review music as well, um, please hit me up, you know, emails in the description. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and click up here, one of these corners. And if you want to subscribe, you know what to do. Click the bell and don't forget to ring the, in the meantime, have a great day. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on room six. Say bye, Wes. Bye, Wes. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.